can leadership be measured? Let me start with the bottom line. Yes, it can. But before we drill down to how you can actually do it, let's talk about what's in it for you and why you need to measure leadership in the first place. When investors decide whether to invest in a company, they want to see, obviously, the numbers they ask to see, the annual reports, the quarterly reports, revenue, P&L, dividend yield, and so on. Now, we all know that the most valuable asset that every company has is its human capital. But no one asks to see the human capital index in those reports. Why? Because there isn't such a thing. That is until Dan Ariely came along. For the last 12 years, Professor Dan Ariely conducted a research based on artificial intelligence with hundreds of companies and found that companies who invest in human capital have equity value that is on average 17% higher than the S&P 500 index. His conclusion is that in order to forecast a company's financial success, you need to look at these variables. You need to ask yourselves, what about the manager and the employee relationship in our company? Do we have personal development opportunities? Whether people feel they are significant to their organization and how motivated they are. By the way, IBI Investment House has already adopted the human capital model and its recommendations are based on these data. So we all know how important it is to invest in our people. But the question is, what's the most effective engine to do so? Here is where Google gets into the picture. Back in 2008, Laszlo Bach, formerly head of people operations at Google, led a study based on people analytics and data mining aimed to have an empirical answer to the question, do managers matter? After six months of research, 10,000 employees, and coding over 100 viables, the answer was crystal clear. There is a direct correlation between management quality and employee performance and retention. Based on this research, later called Project Oxygen, eight essential qualities of a good manager were identified, and all of Google's leadership development programs were rebuilt according to them. One of the most surprising findings was that the last thing employees find important is their manager's technical expertise. The project taught us that it's far more important for employees to have a manager that knows how to empower and develop them, knows how to listen to them, and knows how to effectively communicate with them. So we all understand that leadership development is a safe investment with long-term value and return. So what's the problem? The pain point is that organizations are still choosing their managers mostly based on their professional performance and not their leadership skills. And come on, we all know that not every talented engineer can also be a good manager. I wonder how this flowchart looks like when an engineer needs to motivate a person. So why is it still happening? First of all, because organizations don't know what are the two core skills that every manager needs, besides specific skills that their company's DNA requires. And second, because there is no tool to measure it. As a co-founder at Quattro, leadership and innovation consulting company, we asked 1,200 senior executives from global corporates that work with us one simple question. How do you define a good manager? This is what they told us. Good managers are those with whom every interaction includes two things. Emotional intelligence, and business orientation. Harvard Business School has recently defined the crucial skills for the future manager. Here are the top six. 
communicator, motivates others, positive thinker, strategic, result-oriented, and proactive. As you can see, all of these six are about emotional intelligence and business orientation. Now, every leadership development program deal one way or another with those six skills. But how does the executive program end? Like this. Well, having this kind of feedback is nice, but it does not give us any indication about the effectiveness of implementing these skills within the organization. And it surely does not measure who really is fit to be a leader. That's why we developed the B, a simulator for measuring leadership skills. How does it work? The B simulates managerial day-to-day -day situations and translates managers' behavior into a measurable score in two main aspects, business orientation and emotional intelligence. That's why we called it B. Now, the innovative element of the B is the fact that unlike other tools, the B does not rely on what a manager declares in regards to how much he or she agrees or disagrees with one statement or another. Instead, the B actually puts the manager into a virtual situation in which, for example, his employee asks for a raise or his manager assigns him a new project, and then they get into kind of a ping pong game in which they need to choose how to respond to the other person. The B is a bit like GMAT, meaning every reaction is followed by a different response. But unlike GMAT, there is not a correct or incorrect answer here. Therefore, the social desirability bias, where people answer according to what they think is expected of them, is also avoided almost completely. When the manager completes the B simulator, he or she gets this dashboard. Here they can see their measurable scores on both business orientation and emotional intelligence, including measurable details about the primary skills in each according to Harvard Business School. Now, when organizations use the B simulator in order to recruit managers more accurately, this dashboard gives them a measurable evaluation of their candidates' leadership skills. And of course, it can be done remotely and therefore save precious time in unnecessary interviews. Because you don't want to interview this guy to be a manager at your company. I have a question about the shareholder meeting. Uh, sure, just send me an email. But you're sitting right next to me. Well, just because we're on an airplane doesn't mean we change the way we do business. Just send me an email. Okay. Oh. Another email from that suck-up Brian about the shareholders meeting. Watch this. Till these. Oh. Now, when organizations use the Beast Simulator, to measure the effectiveness of implementing leadership development programs. In that case, the B is used twice, at the beginning of the program and then again six months later. The initial diagnosis enables us to personalize the development process, which we call the leadership lab. We actually know what are the specific skills that every manager needs to develop or strengthen. And the leadership lab puts an emphasis on hands-on exercises and on-the-job training activities in the manager's natural daily environment, even if it's a homeworking one. When the leadership lab ends, the manager completes the B once again, and then they can clearly see their improvement graph. Of course, you, as senior management, also get a dashboard that gives you an overview and shows you all the scores of the managers that went through the process. So, if you're asking yourselves, do we have good managers? Managers who know 
how to develop their teams and to lead the entire company to the desired outcomes you aim to achieve? If you want your human capital to cause the investors to make the right decision and to invest in your company, that's why you need the B4. Because leadership can and should be measured.